the undeclared war against the people. There is an ongoing war, maybe you've noticed. Some people are aware of a few of the fronts in this war, but few are aware of all of them. I'm going to name some off the top of my head, which I wrote down in preparation for this video, and I'd like to know how many of them you agree with. Take out a pen and paper to make a tally for each one that you agree with. One of the fronts of this war is food. Genetically modified organisms which reduce nutrition cause sterility in men, and they also attack us with aspartame in our food. I'm not going to go into the details of the GMOs or the aspartame because those are separate videos, each one of them. All I want to do in this video is name 20 off the top of my head, 20 fronts in this undeclared war against the people. So number one, they attack our food. Number two, they attack our water. The addition of toxic industrial wastes like fluoride. Number three, they attack our medicine. The FDA conceals test results which prove that drugs are harmful. Number four, chemical spraying, chemtrails, which have been tested to include a lot of things, among them nano-sized barium, strontium, and aluminum oxide, with all having health effects. And I'm not going to get into the details. There are plenty of people who have covered the details of each one of these. For example, barium reduces the immune system. Aluminum oxide causes Alzheimer's disease. Number five, media propaganda. There is a war front here in that all major media are owned by a handful of men. And so they can control what we think and what we believe. Number six, the internet. There's a war going on there. Some of the tactics are very subtle. For example, people can't find people on Facebook. A man was looking for his brother in Texas. Couldn't find him. And then when he went to Texas, he looked for himself back in Pennsylvania, and he couldn't find himself. Now, he knows his brother exists, but he can't find him from Pennsylvania. His brother lives in Texas. Then he goes to Texas to visit his brother, and he can't find himself in Pennsylvania. Who is doing this? Who is making it difficult for people to connect with one another? Do they really think that this is going to reduce our communications with one another and cause us to love them, the dictators? No, it's not. As soon as people figure out that they're using this tactic, the word is going to travel, and I'm one to bring it to you. Another attack on the Internet is the videos on YouTube are censored by government agencies, and the Wall Street Journal reported it, and I reported it in a video. Number seven, financial transactions are none of the government's business, but all of our financial transactions are monitored not for money laundering. That's just the excuse. They're monitored for control and the use of the social security number for identification purposes violates the trust of the people. When they force this program on us with a gun to our head, forcing us to contribute for 45 years, we don't even break even. We were told that the ID number would not be used for identification, and you cannot open a bank account or get a driver's license today without your papers. This social security number tracks each one of us as individuals, and we need to get away from that kind of government because it's not healthy. What they will use this for is to take everything we have. The government should not be involved in our financial transactions. They are private. The TSA, number eight. TSA must stand for touching and squeezing your ass. Obviously, they are conditioning us for total slavery. It is a front in the undeclared war against the people. Number nine, there's a trend that somebody is buying up all the freshwater resources, possibly intending to turn them all off if we revolt against their oppression and slavery. Number 10, since they control all means of electrical production, there is an ominous cloud there hanging over everyone. This is enormous power. Since all computers and gasoline or diesel pumps work on electricity, it's very useful to be in control of that. 
because you can just turn it off and the people starve to death. There's no water, no electricity, no food. It's a very powerful tool, and we need to wrest that away from the enslavers. This should be in the hands of the people. Number 11, excess taxation on just about everything, keeping us poor, overspending and lavishing the pockets of the politicians and those who are friendly with government at the expense of the rest of us. Number 12, control of money and cryptocurrencies by the Federal Reserve. They want to regulate cryptocurrencies, which means they want control of them. And we don't want a central bank in control of the cryptocurrencies. We want our own money. We don't want to be tied to their system because all of the central banks all over the world are tied together into one entity. The same people own all of the central banks and they want us to use their fiat currency and all it is is worthless paper. And they're printing more and more and more of it and we have to work harder and harder and harder just to buy food. So we need to get the control of money away from these people and the cryptocurrencies were designed for that but they want to regulate them, which means they want total control of them. If they control the internet and they control the cryptocurrencies, we're right back where we started from with them in charge of everything that's important. Number 13, the IRS intimidates people, cannot produce the law that justifies their confiscation of private property, and they take it without due process of law based on the person's ignorance when they file a tax return. But Joe Bannister worked for the IRS. He doesn't file tax returns because he discovered the truth that no one has ever been able to find the law that requires Americans working in America to file a tax return. It's a mafia. And this IRS mafia has been confiscating private property for too long. And this is a front in the war against the people. Number 14, obviously there is an attack on the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, all in the name of protecting us by taking away everything we have, rights, freedoms, and the rule of law. Number 15, the citizens in this country have the right to board an airplane without illegal search and seizure. And violating their constitutional right to board an airplane without illegal search and seizure is a front in the war against the people. Number 16, there is an attack on the First Amendment right to free speech, led by politicians like Feinstein, Dianne Feinstein of California. Why don't you people of California get rid of her? In the next election, vote for somebody who doesn't have the last name Feinstein. She's got plenty of money, and it came from her association with the government in her public service job. Some $200 million I've read. In addition to the First Amendment attack, we have a Second Amendment attack, number 17, in this list of fronts in the undeclared war against the people. The Second Amendment, right to bear and use arms. And they put that there so the people could defend themselves against the government. But today, the people are outgunned. But still, they want to keep their firearms to defend against the government that intends to take everything from everybody. There will be no freedom, no wealth among the common people. And all those professionals who think they're not the common people, they will be reduced to common people. They'll be working for minimum wage. In a totalitarian system, there is no money for any of the people. All the money goes to those at the top of the pyramid. They spend on the best wines and the best caviar. And the common people, which would be 99.9% .9 of us, get nothing except bare subsistence. So if you went to school for a long time and sacrificed, and you're not paying attention to what's going on, you're not going to be able to keep your fortune. It'll be taken from you, and you'll be reduced to surf class. Do something. You're articulate. You know what's going on. Do something. Don't stand around with your finger up your ass. Number 18. There has been a clear and obvious attack on U.S. sovereignty, even going so far as to allowing the U.N. to make decisions like going to war instead of Americans deciding when we go to war and with whom. 
and John Kerry and Hillary Clinton are on the wrong side of the fence. They're helping the Nazi dictators establish this centralized control, and this is bad for Kerry descendants and bad for the Clinton descendants as well. And these people are not smart enough to recognize that the world they're creating is bad for everyone, including their own family. But they have this crazy idea that they're going to remain exclusive and elite. There's only one person that's going to be exclusive and elite, and that's the world dictator. Everyone else will be his servant. And from what I've read, the CIA did time travel, and they saw that this eventually happened. And so they went back in time and tried to kill the guy's father so that he wouldn't exist. And guess what happened? He existed anyway in a different timeline. Now, I don't understand time travel. I've just read a lot. And I've read this. They went back and killed the guy's father to make sure he didn't exist. And he existed anyway in a different timeline. How do you like that? I believe we can change the future. It doesn't have to come out that way. I believe there are an infinite number of timelines and that we can take the one that's best for us. But we have to act, every one of us. Every one of us has a duty to do as much as he or she can. And if you're not doing as much as you can, then you deserve to go down the timeline where you become the slave. The choice is yours. And every day when you wake up, you've got to do something to help the cause. The UN should not decide for us who we go to war with or when. Number 19, there's obviously an attempt to centralize control to fewer and fewer people. And what we need to do is the opposite. Get out of the UN, quit the federal United States, and join with 50 other states as independent countries that cooperate with one another for all of the benefits, and we don't need a federal taxation system. We don't need a federal representative system. We can represent ourselves just fine. And the last one in my quick list of 20 are the attack on us by regulations that benefit a handful of people at the expense of the rest of us. Every government regulation was written by someone who benefits. And when they benefit, the rest of us take it up the ass. And we, the people, are sick of taking it up the ass. We want the bullshit to end. You probably have your own list of 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 fronts in this war against the people. This undeclared war against we, the people. We didn't deserve to be attacked by the government. But yet, here are 20 fronts. Now, if you've been making notes and writing down the numbers of those that you agree with, you can multiply by 5 and get a percentage. If you agree with all 20, that's 20 times 5, it's 100%. You and I agree 100%. If you have 20 of your own that are completely different than mine, I'd like to see your video. Do you know how to make one? You turn on the microphone and you start talking. You can put pictures to it if you know how to do that. I don't know how sophisticated you are. But I know that everybody had better get sophisticated. They better take action, because we're losing this undeclared war against the people. They got us outgunned. They got the legal mechanisms all in place to rob us blind and deny us all of our rights and freedoms. Some people haven't spent one minute studying the executive orders, but they know every ball player on every team. Now, this is improper use of your mind. You had better think about freedom because you're losing it. Make a decision. What are you going to do about this attack, these 20 fronts in this war against the people? If there is a war against the people underway, the people need to know it, and they each need to decide what they're going to do to fight back. Are you going to take it up the ass by the ruling class, or are you going to kick their ass? Don't turn to guns. That's the primitive instinct, and it's wrong. That's not the way we solve this problem. People have been solving problems by going to war for centuries, and it's time to end that. We have something very powerful. It's a very simple idea, the truth. The truth is devastating to the war criminals and dictators. 
Spread the truth and get everybody aware of what's going on and the change will happen. When they hold a press conference, they only allow the questions that they want to answer. Like, how did you get to be so wonderful? They love to answer that question. But they don't want to answer the people's questions, and so we have to take our questions to YouTube. And we have to ask people like John Kerry, who the fuck died and made you king? What right do you have to go to the United Nations and agree that all Americans are going to give up their arms? Don't you know that that is unconstitutional, motherfucker? Who fucking died and made you the king? We need to make videos that say this to John Kerry because there will be a lot of people rallying behind that kind of video. I know because I make them. And this is how the people feel, but they don't have any expression. Nobody's conducting a real interview. It's all staged. We live in this dream world of non-reality where they play softball with the president when they ask him questions. It's all bullshit. So we have YouTube and we need to ask the disturbing questions and bring it to the people. If I reach a thousand people with a video and you reach a thousand people with a video and there are a thousand people reaching a thousand people, that's a million people right there. And then they go to their workplace and discuss things with their coworkers. They lean over the fence and talk to their neighbors and discuss things with their neighbors. And what happens? Change. Change takes place. We are sick of the rigged elections. We are sick of the bullshit candidates. Look at this election with Bush and Al Gore. Is that a choice? That's bullshit. Obama and Romney? We want a constitutional candidate, not these fucking clowns. A man married to a man living in the White House fooling the whole fucking world? What kind of bullshit is that? The office of president has to be one of integrity. Otherwise, we have a fucked up reputation all over the world. They expect us to be the leaders of the world. They expect America to be great. It isn't great with this motherfucker in the White House. This pathological liar, crack-smoking fucking drug addict. We don't want a fucking crack-smoking president, a pathological liar who's married to a man. This is not what we want. We want a truthful president who makes campaign promises and carries them out. Otherwise, why the fuck do we need a president? We don't need any fucking president. We got to have a governor of the state. Fuck the federal system. We don't need any fucking federal system, federal taxes, federal laws. Fuck you. Fucking federal government is taking over everything. They own 86% of the state of Nevada. What kind of fucking bullshit is that? Federal government owns fucking Nevada? No, Nevada owns fucking Nevada. In California, it's about 50%. This is bullshit. And you have to beg the motherfuckers to do anything on that land. If the land is in your state, it belongs to your state. Fuck the federal government. Tell me one fucking agency that's there for the benefit of the people. Every one of them supports the fucking dictatorship. Now, each one of us has a job to do. Every one of us has a decision to make. Draw a fucking line in the sand and decide which side you're on. Are you on the side of the people or the fucking dictators and the war criminals and the crooked politicians? That line that you're looking at is your state line. For me, it's Arizona. On one side, we have Arizona, which is my country. And on the other side, we have their fucking federal system, which is bullshit. We don't want to belong to the UN and have the UN decide when America goes to war and when the people have to shell out $2 trillion per war. This is bullshit. We don't want a fucking Federal Reserve that has total control of the nation's money. That's bullshit. And we don't want a fucking IRS that takes our pay. Because that is fucking bullshit. And most of the population doesn't even know that the IRS has never paid for a fucking road or bridge in their life. 100% of that money is spent in ways that you would not approve of. And nobody has been able to find the law that requires Americans to file a tax return. And this is fucking bullshit. Why don't the people know the truth? If Joe Bannister figured it out, why can't the rest of us? I know they're going to kill me for saying this. I don't give a fuck. All my fucking chips are in the pot. And I'm going for broke. 
Because I won't stand by and let these motherfuckers do this to us. They can kill one guy, but they can't kill all of us. And we all need to have our chips in the pot. We need to be all in, as they say in poker. Because the motherfuckers who are running our country are foreigners. They are the ones who have control of the money. They're foreigners. Owners of the Federal Reserve are mostly foreigners. They should not be in control of our currency. This is fucking bullshit. Are you going to fight back or are you going to take it up the ass by the ruling class? Get a microphone and kick some ass. Those who control the money control everything because money can buy anyone, even politicians, believe it or not. A dirty, rotten politician will take a bribe. How else could they become so fucking wealthy? By being our public servants. Servants don't get fucking wealthy. Only when they betray us. I'm talking about Harry Reid. I'm talking about Feinstein, Al Gore, John Kerry. Every one of them has a minimum of $100 million. Where the fuck did it come from? They don't make that kind of salary as public servants. What kind of fucking bullshit is going on here? Sellout is what's going on. They're selling us out. We, we don't, don't need, need fucking, fucking representatives. representatives. We, we need, need to represent, represent ourselves. ourselves. We don't need a fucking federal system. We need to be independent states and countries unto ourselves. Representatives should cast votes in accordance with the population they represent, but they don't. As soon as they arrive in Washington, their influence goes up for sale. And they betray the people. So the solution is to fire them. They're not doing us any good. We're better off without them, aren't we? In short, the representative system works about as well as having someone gamble for you. Imagine a poker game where it's your chips on the table and some clown is picking up your cards and playing your hands. This is fucking bullshit. You watch how the guy plays and the asshole is going for inside straights with your fucking money. He's betting heavily without the cards to back up his bets. And he's hemorrhaging money into the pot like it's a fucking bottomless lake that sucks up everything you earn and demands even more from you. No, we don't need this bullshit. Get out of my fucking chair, you clown. I'll play my own poker hand, thanks. It's time for the people to awake from that dream and realize that representatives don't represent the people anymore and the system has to change radically so that the people can cast their own votes. It's too easy to influence 545 corrupt and unethical members of a good old boys club that has a few good people. But that's all. Very few. I have a list of those who are good people in Congress, and I'm planning to make a video about it. But I haven't organized it in my mind yet. It's very difficult to do. I basically draw a line in the sand and I declare who is on our side fighting for us. People like Judge Napolitano, Richard Grove, Doug Casey, Max Kaiser. I have a hundred of them at least. But how do you make an interesting video out of that? And then the bad guys. John Kerry, Obama, Hillary Clinton. I don't want to get into all the names on that list, but I have a good list for each side. I will bring it to you in the future. Those people in Congress that I call the good people, they need to propose a change in the system because they can see that it's not working. They can see how rotten to the core it is. They know better than anybody how things work in the Beltway. If they're really on the side of the people and they care about what's right, they care about their country, they're patriotic, then they have to propose something that will end the representative system. But they don't actually want to change the system if it means they can't ride in first class anymore, spend taxpayers' money, and have a title of nobility in this medieval feudal system of kings, noblemen, and serfs. I want to make this video short and to the point, so I'm going to leave it there. Discuss this with your colleagues, but not over the phone or by email because the NSA is watching. They're listening to every word you speak on the telephone, and they're collecting every word you communicate by email. And they're doing all this with your fucking money. How do you like that? Until next time, thanks for listening.